Hey, hey, you welcome around, welcome back. It is, as always, good to see you. And, uh, yeah, today we're gonna be watching some April Lauren. I need to catch up on her last two videos, so I thought, you know, hey, let's just make a video, right? It breaks up the April Lauren content and my own content a little bit. Uh, it does make more work for me because there's more videos to edit, but, <laughs> you know, what you gonna do? I need to I need to get some video game streams going again soon. I've just been too busy to play the games I want to play. So, but her last two videos we have this one titled "I Am Going to Run a Half Marathon Half Marathon Training Episode One," and Half Marathon Training Episode Two, first week of Half Marathon Training 2023 and a weigh-in. So, I am excited to see the way in. Um, I don't understand her fascination with wanting to run and do marathons and 5Ks and all these miles for time. Uh, because she does have a bad knee, apparently. I don't know what the issue with the knee is. I don't recall. But she has a bad knee. You can tell with the way she walks and runs sometimes. Um, I'm not a runner. I never have been. I don't like to run. The only time I ever enjoyed running was on the tennis court, and then it was just because I needed to chase a ball down. But, yeah, I don't, I don't understand this fascination with wanting to be a runner, especially when at 250 pounds, and even when she was heavier than that, it's not good on the joints. She, she should probably be doing something more low impact. Um, I mean, but maybe she's consulted with her doctor and her doctor has given her the okay to run with a bad knee and at her weight. But I would, at the speed that I've seen her run at or jog, rather, in some of her videos, a brisk walk would probably be just as quick and get her heart rate up just as much. But let's, um, that's just my initial thoughts here before I even start watching. But let's uh let, let's go ahead and get on in and see what Amber or, or Amberland. Good lord. I just recorded an Amberland video right before this. Let's see what April Lauren <laughs> These A names. These A and L. Amberlyn, April Lauren. Let's go ahead and see what April Lauren's doing for her marathon training, half marathon. 2023, I'm running my first half marathon. While I started my official training on December 12th, 2022, I had recently completed a couch to 5k program, yet it's really the little things I've done consistently over the last two plus years that have gotten me here. Pretty minute mile pace right now. I started at 352.8 pounds in September 2020. I had reached 333 pounds and walked my wow. second mile for time. Almost like I'm over a quarter of a mile. You guys, I am almost at 15 minutes and half a mile at the same time. This is going so Trying to walk one mile with 200 pounds to lose. Much better than last time. This is so much better. I can't believe it. And there are so many more flowers. Right, officially at the half mile point. Resting for just a second. Just one second. But I gotta go. So we're just gonna have to walk and talk. Can you guys tell? Like, I feel like I'm talking better while I'm walking. From what I've heard about running and even walking for exercise is you should still be able to carry on a conversation and not be winded. And that is a good pace for you. You know, not be like, ah, okay, ah, you know. I did it. That's one full mile. We're about to go. We're about to get it. Man, these glasses. <laughs> I need some new ones. At least her husband's supportive and exercises and works out with her. I thought they were so cute, but I look like Mrs. Santa Claus. When you have a rounder face like she does here in this one, rounder, rounder glasses make your face look more round. That's why I go with square. 
glasses nowadays <laughs> or rectangular because I have a round fat face. Okay, September 21, 293. And in college, I learned about marathon running for the first time and I fell in love with the very idea of running a marathon. Why? romanticized marathons. Why would you romanticize marathons? Does, does she see runners as like peak athletes? And that's what she's striving to be and that's why she wants to be a runner? As a child, running felt like freedom. It always brought me joy. Yet, as a young adult, I did not feel worthy of even visualizing myself running a marathon. I didn't feel worthy of visualizing myself running a marathon. What? What? So I guess she does see, like, running marathons and running and being a runner as like peak athletic performance. So that's why she's striving so hard to be a runner, even with her bad knee, I guess. Of being someone who would run one. I just felt shame for not being that person. I never considered I could do small things over why does it matter? Do something else. Find some other physical activity that you enjoy and that you're good at. Not everybody's a runner. I know you hear about the runner's high. I, I, I never, but then again, I don't run. Time and those small things could change me and mold me and help me become a runner. Instead, I let that shame keep me frozen and... As I've worked on my weight, the way I approach myself in relation to my body, my thinking has just evolved. My perception. She's always had like some killer calf muscle definition, though. I'm very jealous of her calf muscles. Perception <laughs> has changed from I can't to why can't I? Why not me? Seeing how small changes compound over time. Feeling the benefits of progress, especially the small incremental progress. The way she's walking here, I know it's probably, probably because she's heavier, but it could also be because of her knee, the way her gait is. Um, it seems a little wobbly at this fast paced walking. Um, but yeah, you, you know, small changes over time do add up. And that's one way to make positive lifestyle changes is to slowly make those changes. And then before you know it, they become your lifestyle and it's your habit now. Progress over time. I know I can do anything I set my mind to eventually. Well, I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm sure there's some things I want to do that I can put my mind to and never accomplish it. <laughs> To uh, her neighbors and like, why are you talking about my, like my granddad or something like that? They like meme the hell out of her. Uh -huh. Yeah, this camera angle kind of gives you that look. Yeah. All you gotta do is put your arms behind your uh, back and kind of look forward. Last summer, I set out to run a five five <laughs> k and started a couch to five k program. Week by week, I grew stronger mentally and physically. Shows a lot thinner from here, from her first video she showed us there. Um, her her face shape. Um, I know the couch to 5K is this thing that people do, but man, that can't be good on her knee. We're almost there. I put my turtle earrings on. I don't think I showed y'all. Oh yeah, I watched this video. Yeah, well, this morning. I'm very excited to wear them while I, you know run for turtles. I understand now that if I put in the work, I can make anything happen. I understand that each little step forward is the reward. 
life doesn't happen on our timeline. So with patience, purpose, and persistence, we can make anything happen. The journey to anything that's worth having, it won't be what we expect. These people in front of her need to, need to not spread all over the whole walkway here. Expect It won't play out like we think it will. Yet, putting in the work, working to have patience with the process. 2022 tested me time after time. Each time I moved forward stronger, exhausted, but stronger. As I, I wonder how much she's like, <sighs> I don't know if the people that were like looking at her po pa pass by were just like, oh yeah, somebody's passing us or like, oh my God, is she having an asthma attack? Because we don't have any sound. Continue towards my first 5K, the picture I had of what it meant to run or to be a runner faded. My fantasy faded into reality, and my reality was infinitely more meaningful. Running, even if slowly, week by week, a little longer, a little further each time, my body got stronger, more balanced. The way she's running here, is it her left knee that is the bad knee? Because it almost looks like she's limping a little bit while she's running. And while running, that, that can't be good for her knee. My mind rested, found the love of running I had when I was a child. Running allowed me to feel free. And now it brings me that same feeling, but even more free of thought at times, settled, free of expectations, free of fear, free of negative self-talk, free of forcing my way, and I- The way she's running, I'm not an expert on running or like gates or anything, but the way she's running, it's taking her longer when she's on her left foot, and it looks like she has a slight limp whenever she's running when that left foot's down. I'm just covering my microphone up. I hope you could still hear me. I I just worry she's going to hurt herself. Found a rhythm in running. Running has brought me joy. My experience won't be your experience, and that's okay. How I see running will not be the way everyone sees it, and that's also okay. As I've wrestled with my mind these last few months, I felt small. I'm going to speed her up a little bit here. Defeated and sometimes hopeless. Yet during my runs, I always feel empowered, capable, and at peace. In November, as I was reflecting on what ifs, what if this, what if that, what if this next year, next month, next day, what if tomorrow was it? What would I hope? It I'm barely listening to her because she's just spouting inspirational random, trying to be inspirational crap. I'm, I'm more watching the way she's running. And the distance in her run here, she could be taking bigger steps just walking briskly. Looked like I'd wish to be free, feel joy, to feel my blood pumping, my body moving, companionship of my husband, family, closeness with Heavenly Father, and to have lived my day serving and uplifting others and fully. I would want to spend my last moments progressing in outdoors, living and not drifting to sleep, dreaming of tomorrow, being lulled by scrolling social media or Netflix. I want to live each day, whatever it brings, working forward. And her time, I think, was what, like 53 minutes? I have it paused here. I'll be able to zoom in while I'm editing. But her time, I think what she said it was, wasn't what it showed on this screen, on the, on, on the clock. Since my first 5k, I did a four mile glow run for my birthday. I did a virtual Halloween 5k with my best friend. I did a turkey trot with my husband for Thanksgiving, the Green Beret jingle jog. And I committed myself, my husband and a sweet friend I met through my channel that we would all run a half marathon together. Running a half marathon will require- So a half marathon, if you don't know, is 13.1 miles. Um, I'm not sure what that is in kilometers. I'll put it up on the screen once I do the conversions. I think it's like 20, 23 or something kilometers, but a half marathon is 13.1 miles. Wire me to progress towards it. Inch by inch, day by day, it will give me direction beyond weight loss. It already has. October, November, and the first part of December feel blurry to me. Yet, I managed. I just put her back on regular speed just to see how fast her run here was. 
her, her, her movement. Small, gentle steps forward. I continue to move, and I... Yeah, it still looks like she still has a bit of a limp when she's running. I don't... Is is that just me? I, I just worry she's going to hurt herself. Didn't fall back into old patterns of behavior or coping. In 2023, I'm going to run a half marathon. I will not be running a half marathon for weight loss. I run for me. I run to feel free. I run because having lost right at 100 pounds, I can. And as I continue to lose weight, it will only improve my ability. It'll only improve my health more. I am running a half marathon this year for me, for all the magic running brings into my life. Today I'm happy running makes you happy and is magical and is sunshine, fluffy bunnies and rainbows and unicorns. It wraps up my fourth week of my half marathon training. I feel good. I feel strong. This phase of my training has been building mileage. Every week I'm a little stronger, a little more capable, both mentally. Now run back and pick up your camera and go put it somewhere else to get footage. And physically. I look forward to crossing that finish line, but even more so, I look forward to every bit of training from now until then. Every bit of work. Others may judge, doubt, twist, mock, but I know. I know and my body knows. My progress matters and it is. Whether accepted by others or not is irrelevant to me. I sustain my progress, my effort, and I take responsibility for living the life I want to live. For you know, I'm I'm glad she's found physical activities that she really enjoys. I'm glad she enjoys running. I'm I I just worry that she's going to hurt herself. I mean, just because I don't enjoy running doesn't mean someone else can't. But I also wouldn't try running at my current weight because. I'd probably hurt myself and I'd probably start a fire with my thighs rubbing together. So, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, more power to her. I just hope she doesn't hurt herself or cause more damage to her knee that she's injured before. Finding joy in my journey. Welcome to my half marathon series. I will be sharing weekly weigh in, check in videos, and monthly updates. If you'd like to follow along with me, subscribe, ding the bell, but most importantly, if you take one thing away from this video, remember you're worth doing the work. You're worth figuring out what you need to live each day a little brighter and healthier. Progress compounds no matter how small. So pick one thing, one thing to do and start today. Oh, sorry. I just burped. Um. I look forward to seeing you next time. Before we go on to the next video here. Yeah, that was just, I, I guess, kind of a preview with just clips of her running to, for her to give us some motivational spiels about running and what she's doing for herself. You know, hey, more power to her for wanting to be a runner, but I think she also should be a little more realistic with it and make sure she's not hurting herself. Wasn't she working with a running coach previously? Um, but... Yeah, we'll see how she does. I mean, she's not doing this to lose weight. She's doing it because she wants to run. But losing weight will help her with her running because it'll make her gait a little better. And will help not put so much pressure on her knee when it's impacting, you know, with each with each step. But let's go ahead and get into her next video, the second video. All right, let's put her on 1.25. All right, got some breakfast, got some dishes, got some eggs, got some dogs, got some trees and a gray sky. Again, I forgot to get strawberries at the store, or with, with my groceries. Man. I have bananas. Okay, oatmeal. Is that just egg whites? On a cutting board? Alright, so that was her husband's. Uh, strawberries, eggs, sausage it looked like. And then she's having oatmeal with blueberries. And some... Eggs, uh, some hard eggs. Going to teach yoga, I guess. Alright. 
Going back home? All right, get in the closet. <laughs> I feel like I'm just providing <laughs> verbal <laughs> descriptions of what's happening. So if you're just listening to this video or listening to it, <laughs> you know what, I, I guess you know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, time to walk the puppers. All right, we're walking the dog. Some fuzzy boots. Got our camera sitting across the road from us while we're doing this. You know, I might cut out some of the dog walking, so if there's no more dog walking, that's why. My answer. Yeah. As the new year begins, I want to take more time to soak in the beauty around me. All of the little things that help me live each day a little brighter. A lot of her video shots if we're out and about are either of her feet or a quick look at her face and she just smiles. For Lauren, currently training to run my first half marathon. I've been sharing my weight loss journey here on my YouTube channel. Go back to your camera. Don't leave it there. Quite some time. This is another weigh-in video and I will also be sharing some half marathon training with you. Hey puppy. Hey puppy! Hey puppy, you're such a cute puppy. Look at those faces. I am not a dog person, but I like other people's dogs. I like Twinkie. I like these dogs. I don't recall their names, but... So excited to share a little bit more about my half marathon. And for my first... Jump around. Jump around. <laughs> Sorry. Jump around. Way in Wednesday of 2023. Hey, I'm seeing emotion in her face this time. I'm seeing some eyebrow movement. That makes me happy. Her eyes look happy. Good. What you doing? What you doing? Huh? I feel bad that they followed me up here because I keep going downstairs because I keep forgetting stuff downstairs and then I come upstairs and they come upstairs and then I go downstairs and then they're like, I don't know if I'm going to go back upstairs with you. And then they don't, but then they do. Dogs are like, screw this. I'm going to stay on one floor. Her dogs look a little pudgy too, though. And I'm like, well, now I got to go back downstairs. So this one, she is used to my shenanigans. Boo Boo doesn't usually play, but today he's like all involved. You chilling with me when I film? Aww. Yeah. Welcome to my first way in Wednesday. I think so. She stands with one leg out and the foot uh, again. Look at that calf muscle definition. I am so freaking jealous of that because I just have like, I don't know, big fat round legs, like no calf definition at all. I have cankles, but she stands with one foot up like that. I think she said before because in her early weigh ins. She couldn't stand very well with her legs together because of her thighs touching so much. And she had to kind of put that one leg kind of up on the toe to the side. So I'm not sure why she still does that, if that's the reasoning, or if it's just a pose to make her look slimmer or to make her waist look smaller by putting the leg out like that. I don't know. But she's also wearing a bag eater shirt here as well. Of 2023. So it is time for the weigh-in portion of this video. I am changing the weigh-in portions just a little in that I am going to share more. And by more, I mean, I feel the more important things about. A so by sharing more, she's going to share what she thinks is important about it. So I wonder what that's going to be. Weight loss journey. And that is taking into account, that is looking at my sleep, looking at my steps, looking at, looking at some of my choices. Some weird editing jumps here. Says in lifestyle and not just the number on the scale. I feel like weight loss is so... The number on the scale is not the most controllable number. Sure, you can force it down. I can force the scale. Can you? 
forcing it down seems like a very negative way to look at it. And yes, losing weight is more a holistic journey of a person. And there are lots of non-scale victories, like being able to fit into a fair, fair, a pair of pants you couldn't before, being able to feel that your clothes fit a little better or looser, being able to walk up stairs without feeling winded when you get upstairs. Um, there are so many different non-scale victories that go along with getting healthier that don't directly correlate to the number on the scale, of course. But to be like, oh, I could force it down. Well, then why don't you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so why don't you? Um, if your goal is to lose weight, do that. I mean, and of of course, there's other ways to measure as well, like doing measurements with a tape measure on different parts of your body, which I still haven't done yet. And I probably should. I'm just, I'm lazy, to be honest. I just, I, I look at my tape measure and I'm like, eh. And I just go do something else. But there's there's so many... There, She's right, and there are so many other factors and ways to look at things. For example, when I was seeing a trainer at Gold's Gym like six years ago, when I first started going to the gym, I had a trainer. And my, 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 my thyroid levels were for some reason getting out of whack. But... I thought I was eating better, but I wasn't really tracking calories, but I was going to the gym and working out with him like three times a week. And I was going two times a week without him. And Joe was so great. We were, I was frustrated one day because it had been like a week and a half and the scale hadn't gone down for me. And he was like, well, Hey, do you feel better? Or do you feel stronger? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, and that's what matters. He's like, the numbers on the scale will come eventually. He's like, but if you're feeling better and you're feeling stronger, that's what's important right now. And I, you, you know, Joe had a lot of really good advice and he was very positive and very helpful. And I learned a lot from him, but it's like, you know, she is right. And not everything can be correlated to the scale every single time. But that being said, with everything that April says that she does, I'm surprised the scale hasn't gone down more for her, given how much she works out and all the exercising that she does. I don't know what she eats because she doesn't really show, show us except for that breakfast. So I don't, so I'm, I'm a little surprised personally that the scale hasn't moved down more for her. In the last six months down forcing the scale down does not create lasting change the work to create lasting change must be done however we can all choose when we do that work there isn't a right way creating a healthy sustainable lifestyle does not look the same for everyone we start at different places have different challenges and a lot of other variables our choices are ours to make when i all right we all have variables we all have the different things while the basics of losing weight are being in a calorie deficit. There are multiple factors within each indiv each individual person as to how our bodies deal with those calories, right? So it's, I mean, there are ge genetic issues, medical conditions, and other things that can make it a lot more difficult for people, for some people, and make them have to work a lot harder at it started this journey, my journey, I chose and I choose to do both. Sustaining the habits I've built, the progress I've made while being tested in various ways has been my focus more recently. Accepting existing limitations while working to grow past them is also progress. I've not been focused on a weight loss and now I am. Now I shall be. <laughs> now I am. Now I shall be. And I am really looking forward to see how recording and sharing and focusing on my weight separately than on how sharing what I'm filming is going to affect me because it will be. 
focusing on weight loss and what she's eating separately from what she's filming, how it's going to affect her. Far behind me. And if it needs to be further behind me, then that's what I'll end up doing. What do you mean behind you for the, but what? What needs to be further behind you? What you're filming or the weight loss? I'm confused. Somebody let me know what she means by that down below. Maybe it's because I paused in the middle of what she was saying. But if somebody watching this knows what she's talking about, let me know. But I think that this is going to be, I think a month is a good, a good timeline. And we'll see how that works out for me. We will see. Every month I'm not going to be. Let me look at my notes. <laughs> let me turn the page. Tracking yet a lot of them, especially the next few months, I will be tracking my food. I definitely feel a new resolve to push a little harder and push through now that I know my tubes are not blocked. I really didn't understand how much that affected me. So I guess that was one of the medical things she was dealing with at the end of last year with her tubes. I assume she means fallopian tubes in order to get pregnant so I guess if that were a possibility of them being blocked I think that could lead to infertility or at least make it even more challenging to get pregnant and since one of her big goals is to get pregnant I guess having that be a possibility of not even being able to get pregnant might have put her into a negative headspace and not focused on losing weight as much since one, since, since one of her big goals for losing weight is to get pregnant, maybe. But I think part of me just accepted that. And so let's just go ahead. So I probably just cut out some content of her husband coming home and them just chit-chatting and the dogs and things. Back to it. So last week I averaged six hours and 18 minutes of sleep a night. So I didn't get that every night. I got, I guess, less and more, but that's what it worked out to be. And I don't know if I trust the Garmin sleep score, but my average sleep score for the last week was 62, which is quite low. So hopefully as I continue forward, my sleep will get better because that just sucks. And my water intake this week has been way better, but I'm definitely did not meet my goal of a gallon a day every single day. So I really want to focus on getting my water in and I'm going to start tracking that water just like I'm tracking my food and as far as tracking I will touch base on if I'm tracking or not every week how I've done and this week I just started tracking and I didn't start at the beginning so I've been tracking but it's not really reportable I guess yet so meh. <laughs> And the big number, I guess, that maybe uh, some of you are here for since I haven't shared this in over a month. This week, I weighed in at 255.9 pounds, which is up a little bit since the... It wasn't she like 251 in August of last year or September? Last time I shared my weight has been lower than it was in... Oh, oh. <laughs> So now we're posting, so now we're showing like an article to justify the increase. November and it has been higher than it is. That it's just a fluctuation. Uh, so based on weight change from Q1 baseline screening to Q5 and from Q... Five to Q92, these men were divided into, what's that, five groups, sorry. It, it's fuzzy on my screen currently. Um, but this says these men. So this study was based on men. The body composition for men and women are very different. And men are going to have different weight changes and fluctuation than women are. So, and men are able to lose weight much easier and quicker than women because they have a greater muscle mass. So, I wouldn't consider this study to be completely accurate for women if it was only performed with men. 
So while I'm editing, I might pop in and read this to you out loud because I, I can't really see it cl very clearly on my screen currently. But let's see what she has to say about it. So I found this study that she is referencing and I may cover it in more depth in a separate video and cut out her piece here as well. I'll leave it here too, but I may cover this study and what it says in more detail in a separate video. Here on her screen though it does say, my weight has fluctuated, <laughs> my weight has fluctuated daily and weekly, yet never hitting close to a 4% change up or down. I maintained this range throughout the holidays and lots of other stressors without force. It's not a weight gain situation, it's a weight fluctuation. The stable weight was defined as less than a 4% change in body weight over a period of time. My Less than a 4% change. So at 250 for her, a 4% change would be, let me, let's see, at 250 pounds, it'd be 10 pounds. So 4% would be 10 pounds. I'd be interested to actually read that study and see what the starting weights of those people were and that's or th those men in that study were. Weight has been stable since July 2022. Small weight fluctuation. So does that mean even when you're losing weight, it's just a fluctuation or does this only count for gains? Because if you slowly gain a pound, a pound, a pound, a pound, or slowly lose a pound, a pound, a pound, a pound. Are, are those just fluctuations? And yeah, we're, we're gonna, our, our, our bodies are gonna have fluctuations based on hormones, water intake, dehydration, how you sleep. There's always gonna be fluctuations, but this just seems, this, this, this feels to me like she's trying to make excuses. That's what this looks like to me, personally. That's how I see it. And I just spit all over my laptop screen. They're part of life. Sometimes our bodies hold water due to stress and an inflammatory response to medicine, allergies, we have a period, bloat, all of which can cause a temporary... That's when I know my period's coming up and it's going to be shark week. There's, there's an uptick on the scale by like three pounds over one day. Increase on the scale. That is not permanent weight gain. The opposite is true too. Maybe we get a little dehydrated, don't eat carbs, or something else that results in a temporary shift down. There will always be a degree of fluctuation morning to night, day to day. It's the trend over time that matters. That's what I've, I've always said in my Amberlynn videos and my own videos. You're going to see the scale jump around a little bit, but it's that it's that trending, that continuous movement. We want to see a continuous trend down. If we start seeing a continuous trend up, that's not going to be a good thing. It's the trend over time that matters. This week, I weighed in at 255.9 pounds. She's still down overall 97 pounds. So, you know, that's nothing to sneeze at. She's done great to, to, to lose almost 100 pounds and keep it off have not been focused on a weight loss. Going through the challenges of the last year tested me. Allowing myself space to focus on what I needed is progress. I have made lasting changes. These changes sustain my progress. Being tested increased my confidence, resolve, and my faith. I know where I'm going and I know I will keep it off. Going forward, I will be tracking my food and Always with the understanding I will choose to sustain the progress I've made, my overall health and mental health over forcing things to happen on a specific timeline. I will get to my goal in my time. I know a lot of people say she hasn't lost weight quickly enough. I think that's more a criticism of what she shows us that she's doing and eating versus what we're seeing as the outcome. You know what I mean? Um, 
I will say taking time to focus on your mental health if that's what's holding you back that's extremely important you have to be in a good headspace mentally to be able to make changes in your life and to be able to lose weight Beatrice Caruso did that last year she focused on her mental health but she was still exercising still working out she wasn't tracking her calories or focusing on losing weight because she was trying to get into the right space mentally and she was very open and honest about that the last thing I want to touch on weekly is just events or things that may have happened. Things that may have happened over the course of the last week that would affect me overall. And sometimes I might do that in like a vlog form. And then sometimes I might just point back and that's what I'm going to do now. So last week or this past week, I did my mile for time, which was good. I had a cold, which sucked. I took a lot of cold medicine and that never sits well with me. All that being said, my little non-scale victory moment is I did my fastest mile that I've done yet. And that was 14 minutes and three seconds. And I feel like I could go a lot faster. So we're gonna have to see this month. And the other thing was we ran into the new year. So I love that for us. I don't know at what point on New Year's Eve, we both had runs to do. And I was like, you know, we should be running at night. And so I like forced us out of the house and the, I took the pups with me. If I have a shorter distance, I like to take the pups with me when I run. And that just seems so cheesy to me. We're going to run into the new year. Let's be running at midnight. <laughs> They, um, they just trot along beside me since I'm slow. And so our whole little family, including the fur babies, we ran into the new year and it was really special. And I'm happy that we did that. It, um, it was a good, it was a good time. And that's going to. It seems like that made her happy and she enjoyed that. Even though for me personally, I just think it was a little cheesy. <laughs> wrap up the weigh-in portion of this video. So if you've made it this far in the video, drop a heart in the comments below and let me know. And let's go to Sam's Club. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I could just imagine the narrator. We did not go to Sam's Club. <laughs> Just hung out. Had lunch. I did some housework. And then we went to the gym to do our workout. What is it that I want for you? First leg day of 2023. In October, I got a running assessment done and I just really wanted to check in. I was wanting to start going faster and I wanted to check in on my form because up to that point, everything I had done, it feels good and I don't want to have pain. Even now, like pain is a sign that I will be stopping whatever I'm doing and like discomfort, something to push through, but there's a big difference in pain and discomfort. And so I got a running assessment and that really built up my confidence in my running and it it sparked a little hope and I ended up needing to have that hope. And I held on to that as I went through something. I kept thinking. So was that assessment that she had for her running? Was it, did they say her, her way of running her gait was fine? I try to run a marathon and then I found an opportunity and I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do this. And then in December, I was like, I need guidance. I need guidance. <laughs> and so I got a running coach to work with me regularly. And that was very hard because it meant giving up a lot of the other things that I enjoy doing. With my half marathon training, everything I do is intentional. So the workouts that I do are intentionally building up weaker points on my body so that I have better, stronger form and more capability. And so... I, it was, it was a change and I'm going to do more videos on it, but I thought I would share a little bit of the training for the rest of this week. Look at her husband back here going hard on that. I don't know what that is, that machine, but I can't remember what it's called. He's just back there just going hard on that sucker. And she's up here doing these weird little pistol squat. She said it was just kind of bouncing. Boop, 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 boop.
I didn't video everything and I likely won't video everything because there's a weird line in being able to be productive and then sharing. And I need to prioritize being productive and moving my needle forward more than filming. And so with, um, with my marathon training and weight loss, like that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But I am so excited to share what I can when I can with you. And I really enjoy seeing the progress of intentionally training for something specific, meaning like an, a specific purpose behind what I'm doing. It's really cool that have these workouts that maybe I don't get all of the little details, but I do them. And then in my next. Her husband's really working out hard. We saw him stretching and then on the little elliptical row thing. I don't know what that is. And now he's sitting scrolling on his phone. <laughs> run, not the very next run, but like a week or two later, I start feeling improvements that I didn't even know needed to improve. And that's pretty great. So for now, I have two strength training workouts a week, one lower body, one upper Why are we looking back at the beginning of January? Upper body, and then... I guess this is a January recap video, maybe? One or two sessions that are no impact, so like on an assault bike. And then I also do yoga, and I also have run days. So this week specifically, I had two two-mile runs and then a four-mile run. And... Everything is going really good. I occasionally go run with the run club or I'll go and I'll walk with the run club depending on how much the mileage is for the days that the run club meet. And it's been really helpful and encouraging to be with people who are doing something similar that have similar goals. And it's awesome just to see people accept themselves where they are while working to progress and get better and to do so without judging negatively, at least in front of me, themselves or others. And I love that. I love that about the running community. I love that about the OCR community. I love that about most fitness related. What's OCR? communities people are just happy to be there to work on themselves and encourage those around them i know that's not blanketly true everywhere but i enjoy what? it i enjoy it when it's there and i was very nervous for this run and i did it i did it i loved it and i um i'm excited to see what the next long run brings i just finished my longest run but I feel really good. I feel really strong. Great. Dog, you saw something he didn't like. Great way to end the first week of marathon training of 2023. And great way to end a long run. I am pumped that I feel as good as I feel. My hope is that my good feelings continue tomorrow and that I still feel good on my next run day, which I don't think is until Tuesday. So, got a little bit of time. Sunday, I felt great. Like I felt strong. I didn't have any soreness or any places of concern. And that made me feel so happy. And it made me look forward to the next week. And what in the world is she wearing? What are these? What are these pants she's wearing? What what are these? Weird footy. I don't, I don't know what she's wearing. <laughs> Thanks for letting me share a little bits of my marathon, my half marathon training with you and my weight loss journey. Thanks for encouraging me. I'm so grateful for you and I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Well, this is going to be very long and I apologize so much. I talked a lot. She talks a lot. There wasn't a lot in hers that I could cut out. That wasn't her babbling, her inspirational speak or giving plans of what she's doing, but I will cut out what I can and um yeah april lauren wants to run a half marathon this year i don't know what her obsession with running is other than she feels free when she's running and she has this romanticized idea of running and all of that jazz but all that being said this is already long enough i hope you all have had a lovely day and i'm not sure when i'll get this uploaded but I have to edit it, which means I have to watch it to edit it. It's going to be an hour. So, but I hope you have a lovely day and until next time.
be safe and take care.